Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hope, and today I'm going to do something that I haven't done before, and that is the mid-year freakout tag. So I'm just going to tell you guys a little bit about what I've been reading so far this year. Um, as of right now, I've read 129 books. My goal for the year is 150, so I'm almost there. I'll probably finish that like in the next month or so. The last couple months, I've been slacking off a little bit on my reading. I think I only read like 11 or 12 books last month, but that's okay. That happens. Last year, that happened in like February and then again in October, so I expected that to happen at some point. But I have been reading a ton of historical romance this year. That's what I've read the most of, but not all of the books that I'm going to talk about are historicals. I think a good, a good number might be historicals, but some of them won't be, so that might be a nice surprise. Um, I've never done this tag before, so I literally have, like, the questions, like, I have them written down. Because I've never done this before, and there was no way that I was going to remember them, and my phone is charging in another room. So I was like, well, we just go write these down, and we go do it. So, um, this will just be that book tag. It's not going to be that long, and we'll just kind of see where we are. So, the first question is, the best book that you've read this year? Honestly, the, the best book that I've read this year that I still think about and that I am eagerly anticipating the sequel for is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. That is kind of a like YA fantasy kind of book, actually. So that's a nice surprise. I don't have it. I have not really come across it anywhere, but I absolutely loved it. It's like a play on the King Arthur myths, like in the present day in... It's at UNC, so that's in Charlotte, right? So it's so good. I 10 out of 10 recommend reading that book and eagerly anticipating the next book because it would, guys, it was so good. I was a little bit unsure of it. Um, I picked up in February uh, for the Black Author Readathon and I devoured it. And it's pretty thick. And I just like devoured it. It is so good. I 100% recommend reading it. Also, for the historical romance, I'm going to go ahead and throw out the entire Bow Street Bachelor series by Kate Bateman. It is three books, This Earl of Mine, To Catch an Earl, and The Princess and the Rogue. Like, these are so good. I love them. It follows three guys. They have been made earls. Um, they work for Bow Street, but they kind of deal with, like, espionage type crimes. And... They fought uh, at, like, in the Napoleonic Wars, I guess, I'm, I think, uh, yes, in Napoleonic Wars, they were in, like, the King's Rifles, I think, I don't know what that is, I know nothing about the British military, especially the British military circa 1812, so, anyway, I will recommend this entire series, uh, it's an absolutely beautiful series, the covers are beautiful, sadly, one of my books, when I bought it, and pull the sticker off this happened but it is an absolutely beautiful series I 100% recommend the whole thing a lot of times I love like two books in a little trilogy and then I just hate the next ones nope loved all three of these I think I gave all three of these like four to five stars they were so good so I 100% recommend reading that series uh that's my you know favorites so far this year and the next question is best sequel that you've read this year and I'm gonna go ahead and just use these again the princess and the rogue uh, by Kate Bateman is one of my like just favorites I love this we have this like guy who's an Earl who also works for Bow Street and owns like a gambling club and also a Russian princess in exile yes 10 out of 10 recommend this I thought it was great I think it's so much fun um, I didn't expect to like it as much as I did I was I picked it up because I was like I don't think I've seen that premise before so good absolutely loved it and the other sequel that I read this year that I absolutely loved is Take a Hit, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. This book is fantastic. I liked Chloe Brown. I did. Danny Brown was so good. I absolutely loved it. I loved Danny. I loved Zaff. I loved just how they were apart, but also how they were together. I thought it was so good. I could like feel myself in those characters so much more than I feel like I did in Chloe Brown, even though I really loved that one too, but Danny Brown was really just where it was for me. I absolutely loved it, and I recommend that you guys read all of these books because they are so good. 
Next we have a new release that you haven't read yet. So yesterday, a hockey romance by Samantha Whiskey in the Carolina Reaper series came out called Caspian. I absolutely love that series. So I do want to read that. It literally just came out yesterday. And then I also have The Most Eligible Viscount in London by Ella Quinn. This is book two in the Lords of London series, the first being the most eligible Lord in London. Um, this is like someone that's, it's two, clearly it's two people. Oh, some days are just like this for me. So we have our couple, the guy proposes, but he doesn't do it for love. So she says no. And this is going to be the story of him trying to like get her back. And then I also have Undercover Duke by Sabrina Jeffries. I actually have an arc of this and I feel so bad because I did not read it before release date. I still haven't read it. It came out, I think May 25th. And I don't even 100% know what this one is about, but I do know that I love Sabrina Jeffries and I love a good Duke, so I was like, I'm going to read this book. So those are three that I am looking forward to reading soon. Um, hopefully I get those done pretty soon. I can never say, like, I'm going to make sure I read this next month because I'm not the kind of person that does that, but I'm hoping to get them done soon. Next we have your most anticipated release for the second half of 2021 or of this year, however you want to say that. So I have two that I'm looking forward to. Um, one is London Prep. It's going to be like book five. I think it's called The Party by Jillian Dodd. That is a like prep school romance uh, set in London with our girl Mallory who just moved to London. She was on an exchange program, but now she's moved there and kind of her navigating friendship and love and stuff like that. I absolutely love those. And then I also have um, Devil in Disguise by Lisa Kleypas. I think that comes out at some point this year. It might be very soon, but it's part of the Ravenel series. So I think it's book seven. Um, and I'm reading that series and I do want to read this book too, of course. Um, hopefully I will kind of be caught up. I have those books over here. Hopefully I'll be caught up or actually they're behind me. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be caught up, oh my gosh, by the time the book comes out so I can read it when it comes out. I almost never like got that out. <laughs> what a day. Okay, the next question is your biggest disappointment, Scandal's Bride by Stephanie Lawrence. Um, I've been looking forward to reading this. I'm trying to read the entirety of the Sinister like, original series. As you can see, it's like up there. I always look the wrong way. So it's up here behind me, but this was not it. At 23%, we go into a rape scene where the heroine rapes the hero. I've talked about this before. My most disappointing read, I read to like 25% and I got rid of it and I'll never read it. So that was very disappointing. Um, that's not what I expected. I think I'd read it before and it just wasn't what I expected, but Next, we have your biggest surprise, Legendborn by Tracy Dion, which was also one of my best books of the year. That surprised me. I was not sure that I was going to enjoy that kind of YA fantasy thing that was going on, but I really liked it. And also, The Year of the Witching was a really big surprise for me. Uh, so really, none of the romances that I've read have been surprises. Like, I assume I'm gonna like them, and I do. But The Year of the Witching is like a horror novel. Uh, set in this like puritanical society and there's like witches and mayhem and like an evil prophet just all kinds of things uh, I saw it like on good mm, did I see it on Goodreads horror nominations possibly but then I saw Kayla from Books and Lala read it and she absolutely loved it and then I put it on hold in my library and it finally came through and it was so good I ended up absolutely just loving it. I powered through that one as well. Like, could not put it down, could not stop thinking about it. So, both of my most surprising reads were not any type of romance. So, I feel like I'm really branching out just a little bit. So, I'm proud of myself for that. All right, next we have your favorite new author. So, this can be like new to you or just like a debut author. So, mine are both new to me authors. First, I have Joanna Shoup. Here I have her Uptown Girl series. I bought the whole thing, absolutely have loved it so far. I still need to read uh, The Devil of Downtown, I think. But I still loved like the first two books in this series. I love the way that Joanna Shoup writes. I'm super interested in the Gilded Age. So 
yes, Joanna Shoup is one of my new favorites. And then again, I'll keep, I should keep these books closer, the Kate Bateman books. Um, I'm gonna pick up some more of her books, I think, but I absolutely fell in love with Kate Bateman when I started reading the uh, Bow Street Bachelors series. So really positive there that I'm finally branching out in historical romance as well. I feel like I was reading a lot of the same authors over and over and over again, and I'm really branching out with that too. So I feel accomplished in that. All right, so the next question is your newest favorite character, and I feel like I don't get super attached to just, like, characters, but I was like, you could just call it your newest book boyfriends, so that's what we're going to do. Let me find the books. Okay, so I have read, like, almost all of Eloisa James's Wild series, and I absolutely fell in love with the heroes of that series. Um, the heroines as well, but... We are definitely going to, we are here to talk about Lord Alaric Wilde, um, the future Duke, and also Thaddeus, how do you say his name, Erskine Shaw, who is Viscount Greywick and will also be a Duke. They come from um, Wild in Love and Wild Child. They are the heroes of these books, and I just love them. They're so different. So Alaric Wilde uh, is kind of an adventure, he is not going to be the Duke. I don't know why I said that. Um, Alaric is just like Lord Alaric. Anyway, so he is kind of an adventurer. He's wild. There's this huge play written about his life, and he comes back home, and he's just like, what the fuck? And I think he is so much fun. He um, meets Willa, and he just knows that he is like, he likes Willa. He wants to be with Willa. I just think that Alaric is great. He's a lot of fun. He's seen the world. I'm always here for a good world traveler. So love Alaric. And then... Um, Thaddeus actually plays a part in a lot of the like wild girls books so say yes to the duke and say no to the duke and he is kind of courting all of them but he's not going to court Joan because her blonde hair shows that she is illegitimate but of course that's who he ends up with is Joan and it's just so fun like he's so contained and so just like perfect and this is him kind of breaking out of that like shelf of perfection and like kind of grabbing the life that he wants and I just really like it I thought it was so good I really like him so those are my two newest book boyfriends I have quite the list of historical romance book boyfriends but I really like those two and I think it's so fun that they're from the same series all right a book that made you cry I'm gonna be honest with you guys I am not very much like a crier in books like maybe I'll give it like but unless an animal dies, I am not really a crier. I don't, I just, it's just not, no, it just doesn't happen. But I read The Loose Ends List by Carrie Firestone. Guys, I fucking sobbed. I was like crying, like actually just like crying. I thought about this the other day and teared up. I am not a crier. I literally thought about this book the other day and my little eyes teared up, okay? This is such a good book. I don't even remember the girl's name in this book, Maddie. So Maddie is going on a cruise with her family, but it is actually an end of life cruise for her grandmother who's suffering from terminal cancer. And a lot of other people on the cruise are ending their lives as well. And Maddie is just kind of growing a little bit as a person and she like falls in love, but she also realizes how important her family is. But God, when, when every single person on the ship died I was legitimately sobbing like I read this all in one day and I just laid on my couch and fucking sobbed but it is so good this book never gets talked about um I've never heard anyone else really say anything about this uh, maybe one person said they didn't like it but I really like this book I thought it was really good it's not the type of book I normally gravitate toward my mom bought it like at the dollar store and gave it to me and I've been putting off reading it and I'm so glad that I finally did it's so good like I always hate when books don't get any kind of hype but they're really good and I was like it was so just like good for me too to probably just sit there and cry next we have a book that made you happy so take a hint Danny Brown made me happy I really like that um I I don't know what it was that book just was like 
it made my soul feel nice. I really enjoyed it. And then I also have When a Scott Ties a Knot by Tessa Dare. I always enjoy Tessa Dare's books. I think that they're a lot of fun and they're pretty lighthearted. This one, we have like pet lobsters and just all kinds of fun stuff. First, and we had like the hero who had brought home like injured soldiers and that was kind of what his stuff was he was going to make sure that these injured soldiers had a place to go and it was just so heartwarming and so sweet and i just really liked it this one was very very good and then i have the most beautiful book that you've bought this year actually i have two and they're part of the same series so i have devil in spring and marrying winterborn part of the ravenel series by lisa clapis and guys i absolutely adore these books look at the covers you're not able to see these as well as I would really like you to be able to see them, but like they're just beautiful white dresses, like beautiful like backgrounds that are very nuanced. I just absolutely love this. I posted these on my bookstagram the other day. They are so pretty. And then I have one more book that I thought is just really pretty. I don't know exactly what it is, but I love the colors and everything. I bought Mexican Gothic this year and I just absolutely love like the colors, the patterned wallpaper, the dress, the style of dress, the fact that her lips match the dress, the like kind of dead flower she's holding in her hand. I don't know. I just, this cover I'm so drawn to. Even if I hadn't wanted to read this book, I would have probably bought it just for the cover because I think it's beautiful. And then books that you need to read by the end of the year. So, <laughs> so many actually. I definitely need to read the last in the Uptown Girl series, The Devil of Downtown by Joanna Shoup. I am trying to read all of the Sinsters by the end of the year. Um, I need to finish the Wild series. I need to read Too Wild to Wed and My Last Duchess. Uh, and God only knows what else, all these other books that I've mentioned that I was like, oh, but I didn't read those. I need to finish all of those. <laughs> so that is where I am so far. Um, that is all that I have for you guys today. I hope that you enjoyed it and I'll see you next week. Bye.